thanks for having us today. Um, and thanks for the ones who, are, who, are, who stayed and who are listening. Uh, we are presenting today um, uh, a small, a small uh, uh, intervention in an existing office building uh, that, that aims to blur the, the limits between interior and exterior in a, um, uh, with, a glass, uh, with a glass pavilion that, uh, that was designed with curved geometries mer merging with the garden uh, and creating a new fluid and hybrid landscape. Um, the access up to the building is transformed into a uh, brand new experience in which interior and exterior uh, uh, blend together. The proposal was the winning uh, entry for, uh, in a restricted uh, competition uh, with a, a design and build format, which is very not, not very common in, in, in Spain, therefore implying uh, the, the concept and construction. That means, uh, of course, in integrating architects, engineers, uh, 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 consult consultants, and, and uh, general contractor in one proposal, as opposed to the traditional method. As you see, uh, uh, the cost estimate is closed uh, before the final design. So uh, we, uh, so we have uh, a chance to make uh, design decisions that can be adopted to meet the budget requirements. Uh, the owners actually wanted to increase the value of the property, uh, an office building that was built in the beginning of the, of the 90s in the north of Madrid. And the main challenge in the brief uh, was to update the obsolete access space, uh, meeting all the new access requirements uh, and solving the, the existing functional problems. Uh, but the real challenge in the project was to uh, actually build uh, a strong concept working with the three very strong premises. Uh, first of all, the office building uh, had to keep its normal functioning during the works, so uh, it was fully uh, occupied except for one one floor, uh, and this made the planning and the phasing a key issue. Uh, second, it was necessary to integrate and coordinate other actions that were not uh, 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 under our control. That, uh, for example, the elevator renov renovation and an ongoing landscape project already uh, running. And this required an understanding of, the, of, of co a coordination of all the, pro of the processes. And last but not least, uh, the most restrictive uh, um, premise was the low budget, uh, the total budget of the project. We, we had to keep all the works uh, we, we undertook, uh, including the project and the construction, ha had to be around 620 euros per square meter. So this is the result. As you see, so okay, so these were the, the premises. Uh, here's what, where we are. So how we do how do solve, how do we solve this? Uh, is the question. Well, actually, since the modern movement, um, uh, the development of new technological solutions has given us architects a huge freedom of choice, uh, as we saw in the last presentation uh, by by Graham. The, the the industry moves forward and gives us a lot of possibilities, uh, virtually with no, with no restrictions. But the challenge is still the same as well with, in this picture of Abate uh, Loger, uh, is to provide uh, shelter uh, or, or manage the relation between interior and exterior or uh, create uh, controlled environment conditions. S uh, in absence of restrictions, uh, many projects, however, uh, use big budgets and every available piece of uh, technology. Uh, this project instead uh, shows that strong and complex concepts and advanced technical solutions can be undertaken with tight budgets using conventional production systems. But let's start from the beginning quickly uh, 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 with the concept. The existing building had several, several uh, access problems. The main entrance uh, there on the top was barely used uh, because it has a huge stair going up and didn't meet the, the requirements for accessibility. And uh, most people used uh, a little entrance here on the bottom uh, that was a service uh, entrance that was connected actually with, uh, with all the restaurants. So everybody used this entrance that was uh, out of sight from the, from the uh, access control. S and there, there they had als also a requirement for the installation of turnstile turnstiles that was virtually impossible in this really thin corridor in front of the elevators. This is how it was. This is, again, this is how it looked like. 
And then we found the patio that was actually absolutely uh, neglected and I ignored. And, and we found it, uh, it had a lot of potential, actually. Uh, we wanted to, to put it in, in value. So uh, this is what we did. We, we, uh, we, we, uh, had the, we, we were lucky to find a small plot uh, ratio, ratio allowance that um, uh, gave us the opportunity to step out into the patio and uh, uh, solving all the uh, functional problems in, in one gesture. Integrated with the, integrating with the, with the geome geometries of, this, uh, of the ongoing landscaping project, we, uh, we created a 4.5 meter high glass pavilion that allowed the connection of the two entrances, centralizing uh, the movements and integrating the patio in the building. A new frontal main access to the elevators had uh, allowed to distribute the required turnstiles uh, on both sides of the new public desk. So the proposal materializes into a glass pavilion with uh, curved uh, geometries that blend with the garden in a new hybrid space, as I said, and, and curves also favor a dynamic and continuous perception of the, of the space, uh, and define gentle and organized paces. The, the patio uh, then uh, is, was revealed also as the most attractive element in the building. We, the new lighting uh, of the patio that we also introduced, uh, uh, rising race, race to the roof, give more verticality and uh, cross views and, and a, a, a play of, uh, of, of levels, lights and reflections. So the aim of the proposal in the end was to refurbish the space, but it, it was not simply um, through the total renovation of the materials. Uh, th as a matter of fact, maintaining some existing materials, like the granite floor, for example, uh, allowed to accomplish the budget objectives that were not possible otherwise. Instead of the standard tabula rasa approach, uh, we, the proposal shed a new light into the existing elements, integrating the new and the old. For example, the, the glass panels uh, that are ba backlit be, uh, behind the new, um, the new perforated uh, panels. And then, how to support all these ideas? We have here a glass pavilion, and we need to support all these elements. The main problem is that the structural level is in the first uh, slab, but the total level of the glass pavilion is one meter high because we need to <coughs> to put the the skylight in the horizontal frame of the existing curtain wall. For that reason, we need some vertical brackets to support the loads in the total height of the gl glass pavilion in order to to carry these loads to the structural slab. Then we have a big structural beam that support all the dead load, the, the weights of the skylight, and support also the wind load and the dead load and the light loads of the facades. This beam is supported over these brackets, over the, the structural slab in the first floor. And in the second one, we have a secondary beams to support the horizontal glass panes of the skylight, supported in the vertical brackets and in the main beam in the exterior area. But uh, we have this element with a clear structure principle. It's very easy, it's not a problem, but um, where is the problem and the innovation here? Why are here in uh, GPD uh, Congress? Because uh, we have uh, been case very limited. Uh, we need a, a cross section in this point to understand very well the situation. We have mm, the existing frame line of the curtain wall. It's one meter above the structural slab, more or less. But we need to put uh, in the in the interior frame. We have only 60 millimeters of existing frame. But we need over the uh, skylight to put some slope to water falling. And, but we don't uh, lose the communication between the, between the first floor and the ground floor. Uh, this is important for us, that the transparency and the uh, relation between the different spaces of the, of the uh, intervention. And for, for that, and for that reason, we have only uh, 300 millimeters of height, total height, to uh, put all the, all the skylight. With these assumptions, we have a beam only with uh, 170 millimeters height. With this height, with a span between the supports of 10 meters, more or less, 
we have a deflection in the center of the of the beam of 125 millimeters. That it is impossible to assume in every in in one uh, architectural project. For that reason, we need what. What can we do with that? We need to put a support in the middle of the beam to avoid these deflections. This support is not possible to put a structural element like a column, a vertical element, because the relationship between the interior and the exterior from the architectural point of view is impossible. But in this point, we have a glass. We need to use this glass to support this beam and this load in the skylight. But the problem of the glass with the dead lobe is the slender of the of this glass, and we have a problem of buckling. But in this case, the, uh, we need to use some uh, perpendicular elements to avoid this problem of buckling to stabilize this this glass. In this case, we have the 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 lucky the lack of uh, have two different uh, curved glass uh, behind the the vertical glass that stabilize one in order to avoid the buckling problem. But uh, how to build these elements? The construction of these elements, in the facade elements, is very, very simple. We have two types of uh, facade typology. We have the non-structural glass. It's a la curved laminated glass of 12 millimeters paint. But it's supported in the, in the bottom and it stabilizes in the, in the top with a steel uh, lacquered uh, structure. The important thing here is the regulation system because the assembly and the um, replacement of this type of glass, of curved glass, is not easier than a uh, flat glass. For that reason, we have some elements in the bottom. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> it's not in this screen. <laughs> uh, some elements in the bottom to let move vertically the, the, the curved glass. And the other important thing here is the horizontal beam. That is a beam made in some different pieces that is assembly on site. Uh, and we have two types of plates. We have the horizontal plates that are curved and laser cut and vertical uh, plates in order to facilitate the uh, manufacturing, uh, we have the polygonal uh, way in not curved element. And we have the, the center glass, that is the supporting glass, that is a triple laminated glass with 10, 12 millimeters pane that is supported on the, uh, the weight of the roof. In this case, we have this element here and this plate in stainless steel we glued with uh, heel to resin in order to homogenize the edge of the glass and uh, to carry all the, all the loads. This is very important because uh, as architects, normally we draw perfectly uh, flat surfaces and, and we, we have to also bring in the tolerances of fabrication, which is very yes. important. It's very important to combine the architectural point of view and the fabrication point in this case. And we have in the other side the 12 and the two elements to stabilize the vertical glass with uh, structural silicone. In this case, by Dow Corning, uh, it's on site uh, structural silicone. And the skylight is composed by the vertical brackets that is fixed into over the slab, and the uh, horizontal glass beams it, that it's supported were two elements of stainless steel boxes that it's glued uh, over the beam. In the, in the exterior area, the glass is over the steel beam, is overlapped to avoid the water penetration. And in, ter in the perimeter of the interior, we have a stainless steel cover cap with a EPDM membrane inside to, to seal it and to guarantee the water tightness of the system. And the glass beam have uh, the three laminated glass panels and an exterior uh, uh, cover cap of stainless steel. And now go to the construction pavilion. In this case, I think Sergio is the best person to explain you the, the construction because in this case, uh, Sergio was the architect and was the constructor. In, uh, and he was there every minute of all the all the all the building and i think it, they explain very well this 
this part. Well, I've been together actually with Aurelio, who's my other a Peripheria's partner. He's sitting here. And, uh, and I actually, uh, yes, it, it was very important to be on site. And we actually had the, this empty floor. We moved our office into the building. So we were constantly on site. Uh, because there was a, the, the two restrictions, we will go quickly through the construction process. The, the, the two important aspects that we mentioned before, uh, keeping the total budget under control. So there were decisions that had to be taken in the, in the moment. Uh, to react quickly, and also maintaining the whole building functioning dur during the works. Th uh, th that's why we undertook the works in summer. During summer, that was less activity in the offices, and this made it, uh, uh, the planning uh, uh, very short. So we had to overlap production um, 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 uh, processes. So th that's why we had to send like, stencils uh, of the glass to both the steel and the glass manufacturer, so they were both working with the same form, so they would fit when they came together in, inside. It was not possible to take real measurements uh, uh, and then produce. So uh, this is how we found the patio with the, with the landscaping. Uh, we started with the demolition works, actually starting with the footprint of the, of the pavilion. Uh, we, inst we installed the, the, the brackets to to, uh, to uh, support, to the, support skylight, the skylight, one meter on the, above the exactly on the slab. slab. Uh, this is uh, where the, the the beam would afterwards connect. Then we brought in the three pieces of uh, of the of the beam, and we had to weld them together. Uh, we had a topo topo topographer on site and optical uh, ins instruments for measuring that everything was in place in the, in the right in the right because, place. Because all, all the deviation is important in order to go to the main supports of the beam, and with the shape, the curved shape is very complicated to maintain all the degrees in the in the fabrication. Yeah, and parallel, you know, parallel, we were producing the, the, the boxes for the, for the glass that we sent to the glass manufacturer and uh, that were assembled. Uh, assembled it's before. important to note that here is not a facade uh, constructor uh, specialist. It's, uh, uh, it's made for a, a normal industry uh, manufacturer or steel fabrication. It's yeah. not a facade specialist. Oh, they make bridges case. and stuff like this, yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, so... Um, so then, then when everything was assembled, then came the, the, the key moment of uh, bringing the beam up that we had to bring uh, up horizontally and then uh, weld to the to the Support. both ends. And uh, yeah, then there was an intermediate um, uh, here uh, here there was an intermediate support that we kept uh, until we we installed the the, the structural glass. Uh, so yeah, this is the connection with the. With the lateral beams, and you see how the how the loads are brought into the slab here, uh, and then we install the bottom here. Here we are. Uh, it's Miguel and me here. <laughs> it's running a bit this side. And uh, these are the stencils of the glass that were also sent uh, uh, to uh, one of the sets was sent to to the glass manufacturer. Um, uh, so the regulation system. And you see, it's a very simple. Uh, and uh, and also that we we checked with the, with the topographic for the survey that everything was in place and exactly on on the bottom of the of the beam projection. So and then came the moment of the of the structural glass installation. We actually had uh, had the, some tolerances uh, uh, foreseen, but uh, the, there was a, a small decalage and in, into a small movement in between the layers. So we had to. Uh, Bring in this uh, Hilti uh, resin uh, that, uh, yeah, that had really short uh, working <laughs> times and it was quite stressful to install. Um, yeah, and this is this is where you see the uh, the, uh, the 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 point to load the, the glass exactly. with two points and, and the, the regulation of the, the screws and the steel and the distribution plates. plates. Yeah. Oops. This is. This is the risky moment when we had to take out the, yeah, okay. the support, and then we installed the. Then we started installing the skylight. Yes, the installation of the horizontal glass is very symmetrical, but uh, not so over overload some uh, areas of the uh, main beam. It was complicated to it was complicated to install the last one, of course, and and also the the, the because it was an existing building, uh, the accessibility was quite difficult. We had to use like very small cranes that were had a load uh, uh, restrictions, so it was also tricky. This is the de detail before we install the cup. Yes. 
This is the view from the top before landscaping. Uh, some views, the installation then of the APDM uh, waterproofing and the stainless steel uh, finishing. Mm -hmm. And the lighting. And then the installation of the curved glass. Okay. That was hand, uh, had to be hand uh, uh, installed. Installed by hand. And then the landscaping. And here's a small video of the construction of the construction it's only 2 minutes it's only 2 minutes <laughs> it's more representative that our words Time lapse, it looks easy and uh, fast, but uh, and we are sorry if not everybody is wearing a helmet, but it was summer and very hot. Uh, <laughs> provisional elements. Well, actually, as, 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 a, yes, as, a conclusion. as conclusion, as conclusion, we can say that it's important uh, to know that the, all the technology is for every uh, building that is important in this case with a low cost and a, a low resources we can obtain a big a good result yeah it's more about uh, cost effective uh, construction than uh, exactly low cost uh, construction and 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 for this purpose uh, from our point of view is is uh, is a key is very important is a, um, that uh, design and construction are blend together into into one process, uh, so uh, design can meet the the reality. Uh, so so thank you. Thank you very much. Daniel. Thank you very much, both of you, Miguel Angel and Sergio. Are there some questions? I think that was very convincing. And <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's one question there. Thanks for the presentation. Um, I'd like to know how how it was considered if, uh, if the um, supporting glass of the beam fail. Uh, how was that considered of the for the beam? Uh, the the problem the problem the problem of the beam is only a deflection. It's not a problem of resistance. It's only deflection, and we have the enough uh, distance in the rest of the gla vertical glass to in to uh, let this deflection to avoid the glass uh, uh, crash with the beam. But uh, the problem is only the deflection, it's not the resistance. The beam is, is be able to resist on the loads. We actually, even for fire, uh, in, uh, for fire uh, calculations, we, we also found that uh, actually the, the, the glass would cr uh, crash, but the, 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 uh, the beam would still stay there, deformed, but uh, it would not collapse. Any more questions? Anymore? Okay, yeah, we are also running out of time. Yep. Thank okay. you very much again. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Hi there. Did you like what you just saw? If you did, why not like the video? Drop us a comment below as well as share the video with others since GPD is all about sharing. And to receive more videos in future, Subscribe and don't forget to click the bell icon for notifications. Ciao.